Okay, here we are. I don't know why it, like, didn't. Um, love this game some hell hype for it. Yeah, dude, I know. You were one of the ones who you saw on the wheel. I think it's actually your suggestion. You're like, dude, the beginner's guide. Um, minimize this. Oh, can I do it borderless? How come all these games just aren't, like... Uh, no. I mean... Uh, I guess it's you. Okay, as long as it doesn't minimize what I tab over. Hold on, let me, uh... Oh, and I lose my stuff. Ah! I have to open my Twitch thing again. Sorry, team. Um, could you stream egg, 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 and egg? Listen, I can make some egg di Damn, Twitch. Y'all just put them right in my fucking face. You said, bam, look at these. Like, don't me wrong, I'm not going to complain. They look lovely. They look incredible. They look, they look... Just bam, right there, but also like, she, she, she. If you didn't get us talking about, there were boobies on the screen. <laughs> it was boobies. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to turn it down just a bit because it's a little loud. Let me know then if it is too quiet for y'all. I might be too, too quiet now. Hold on. A little bit more. Here we go. Um, turn on subtitle. Oh, they're not on by default. Good looking out. Good looking out. Uh, Close captions. Full caption. Yeah, cool. Cool, bibbity beans. Good looking out there. Bazongas. You damn right. Did he find boobies? Did he find boobies on the Discord? <laughs> oh, it's good. Cool, cool, cool. So, those are what's popping. All right, hold on. Let me do this again. I've been really bad. My I've not been posting my VODs. I need to get back to that. So maybe tonight I'll try and post like seven of them so they just go. But I have to make the thumbnails. That's where I'm dragging my feet. Anyway, I digress. Let me do the thing. Um, yeah. Beginner's Guide. Uh, this is part of our Wheel of Shame. So we get halfway to our sub goal. We spin the wheel. We got Beginner's Guide. We almost got Night in the Woods. We were right there. A couple little like tink tinks. We would have got Night in the Woods. I'm sure Tofu would have been like, finally, he did it. But uh, Beginner's Guide. Uh, again, I got this one from the Overthinking Games podcast, and I was on it a, a couple months back. Um, they gifted uh, they gifted it to me for being on the show. I'm like, oh, thank you guys, and I haven't had a chance to play it, and now is the time. Let's do it. I know Sweet's gonna be like, all right, let's. Sweet's gonna like be my therapist. Just like, hmm, interesting. Danny thought this. Danny really thought this. Okay, Danny's thinking this. This game should only take about two to three hours to play. Yeah, that's what I, I saw. Hour and a half on how long to beat, but like, I always double that for the sake of streaming etiquette and blah blah blah. Hi there. Hello. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. You're welcome. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. Oh, shit. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. I was in high school. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Hi, Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time Are when I was good guys? really struggling with some personal stuff. Damn you, Tink And <laughs> his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. Oh. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around oh, here, by the way. Yeah, wait. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling oh. card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This oh. is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. 
And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. Hold As on, each I, game I've is got, loading, I'm, I'll show I have you. so much I want to say. I want to, like, think. I want to, I was, <laughs> um, so, sweet. Yes, yeah, CSGO, yep. So, I won't say much about the game. Is that to spoil anything? Uh, just a comedic comment here. That, listen, I'll take the comedy. So, like, off the rip, I'm in the spot where I can't tell how, for, uh, not fourth wall breaking, but how real this is yet. Am I actually not jumped into the story yet of, like, hey, here's... I'm taking my friend's stuff. I'm about to show you a game and I'm going to add a narrative to it. Or if it is just like in the game, there is a character who took his friend's stuff, who is also a character and brought it into the game that like, how real is Coda as a developer? How, like how real is the game? The date right. That it was complete. That's where my head's this at. First one was made in November, 2000. We'll have to pause. I feel like it's, it's, it's going to be like continuous dialogue. I won't have the window to talk. Ooh, <laughs> excuse me. I got the hiccups. Oh, I wasn't ready for a gun. Oh, I see no sounds are added. Okay. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Okay. I see now I'm afraid I'm going to attack by an alien. I'm waiting for like a freaking elite to jump out. I'm like, Rrr! Well, okay. There's... It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. Yeah, I see For that. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. Yeah, no enemies. You We're good. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Oh. But ultimately, Damn. we don't really know. <laughs> Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin Cool. <laughs> I <laughs> didn't even give it an option to reload. I just finished my clip I just to test it. Hold on, wait. This is great. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth on it. Oh, good lord. I, uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Wait, I was looking. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. Fix your sky. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine Kinda. and how it has to be turned like, I was saying, like the white rooms? And then you get to the engine room. Also, was was I know that room had like the sirens and the music and everything. Was the music, was it too loud at that point? Do I need to turn it down? If it was just like, oh my God, and you couldn't hear me? I want to make sure I wasn't like a, a hey, broken. you there in the engine room. Sounds good. You Perfect. Appreciate it. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you, your body could stop the beam. Tell me to off myself? So ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? It's just a prototype. Not to, Let me not pause to here snap for a the dead. <laughs> what you just experience I'm stepping cool, cool, cool. into the beam and then dying is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Mm. 
I'm just alive again. Can you go back? No, okay. Do we just do it again? Yeah! Nope, okay. Oh, oh no. Oh, gee. Oh, oh. I am Space Lord. Oh, look, the labyrinth. I guess it was all just dead ends, huh? The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because, yes, <laughs> this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel yeah, in the face of this dog. larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. All right, so I'm going to pump the brakes quick, right? So I if, I did a TikTok review uh, earlier this year for a game called The Game Awards, which was this... Um, the narrative was it was a, an indie dev trying to build the perfect game to win an award at The Game Awards. And the whole thing was like every level was like, what do I think people want to play? Here's a collect-a-thon open world RPG that works way too fast. Here's a third-person action game a la God of War, but it played like dog ass. Here's an RPG that has dialogue systems, but it, the text was too small. And here's everything we didn't like. And then it ends with like a letter from, uh, spoiler alert, I guess. It ends with a letter from Jeff Keighley being like, hey, you'll never come to my awards and blah, 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 blah. It was a little more cynical than I think I was like prepared for. But I think it did. It told the story I wanted to tell just in a game that wasn't fun. I know this came well before. This is like what I think I wanted the game awards to be. That like the game, the game awards to be. Where right now I'm playing through, yeah, a broken game. But the the pieces of it are fun. And telling like, hey, here's what happened. And here's what we gave up. And here's where we moved on. Again, I still can't quite tell if the, the narrative of here's a trash bin full of things I never finished. Is actually like, hey, can I just borrow that? Slap, I made my own game. Hope you're okay with that. Or again, if it is two characters within the universe right that's where i'm at with it um let's do an extra hardcore and i was like fun fun what is this uh this is this is the the beginner's guide so it's uh one of those first persons uh i think the guy again <laughs> I'm, I'm like actual or 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 again characters but the guy's like yeah, i wrote stanley parable um here we are doing the damn thing so it was one of those stanley parable West games uh, a game written by dave okay so you just okay davy is it is it Reedin? I don't, I, forget, I think he said it. But I forgot how to pronounce it. About a collection of games made by a dev called Coded Between Other Things and Other Lemon. I don't want to spoil anything, but enjoy yourself. Of course not. Of course. Imagine their entire game is just his important games for. That's what I think it is, right? That's what I think it is. That's what I think it's supposed to be. Ooh, look at those bricks. Hold on. Oh, I can't move. <laughs> the past was behind her. Okay. I waited for him to pop in and be like, oh, yeah, he never added movement to this one. Or did I glitch it? <laughs> so try walking backwards. Oh! Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. That's fun. Oh! Wait, hold on. I'd play this. Oh, it's just crazy. I'm... What, so what it's it? a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. But it's just cool. I almost want like, I almost want like a rear view mirror, right? Um, what's oh shit? What's the other game? There's a game that has a rearview mirror that you have to use to fight. I can't think of what that one's called. But if I it's if I was playing thought, this, it says what it wants to say and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Like a Gmod map. I didn't play a lot of Gmod. We played prop on one day, but like I won't lie, Gmod's like confusing. Not me trying to only walk backwards because I was already trapped in it. <laughs> Um, you are now entering the scrum zone. 
to, again, th- not necessarily related to this, but I like the darkness reminds me. There's a game called The Veil. I, I feel like Sweet might know what it is. I don't know if anyone else knows what The Veil is, but it is a game that is like all black and the entire thing is based on audio. Like, I don't know exactly how you play it. I haven't launched it and tried it yet, but I think it's like a medieval tale. Like, I, I, I always think of Plague Tales when I hear the audio from it. And I don't know how exactly you play, what the controls are of it, but you're playing everything based on like the audio cues that you get. So I'm not sure how to play. I thought it'd be a fun one to stream. I just don't know that it is. And I'm like, I don't want to be like, we're playing the veil. And chat's like, it's a black screen, Danny. I don't know. It's just fun. I don't know. I don't know. But I definitely need to get to that. Super, what's popping? Uh, let me... Okay, hold on. I'll hit that. Because for some reason you can't save blind. Um... I heard of it or something. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks really fun. I just, one, I'd love to stream. I just don't think it'd be a fun stream. I feel like I'd pull it up. I feel like that's one where I'd almost be like doing a VR stream where I'm like, oh God, chat, how exciting is this? Oh, you want to talk to me? I can't, whatever. Um, I think it's better without the mirror because for a narrative standpoint, the game could follow how focusing on the past makes you blind in the future. Listen, I'd be lit. I almost feel like I'd want that as the crutch though, right? Where, like, if I'm playing a game where I start with the ability to have the rear view mirror, and then partway through, that mirror breaks. Or something happens where, like, oh, the mirror falls off. And now I'm dependent on actually looking in the direction. I think that gives me the resource to progress. It's almost one of those, like, the character has all the powers at the beginning, and then gets nerfed. And now, like, not in a bad way where it's like, oh, shoot, I lost all my powers. I can't do my cool combos. One where, like, here's the ease of entry. Also, now here's a challenge for you. Let me increase that. So even if, like, the first quarter, I won't go first half. First quarter of the game has that rearview mirror. And once I get my footing, I could then, like, experience it without that tool. I think I'd be cool. That's where I'm at with it. Playing with no face cam would be funny. What, for the veil? <laughs> Listen, it might, it might be funny, actually. Yeah, it might. I just put, like, 17 ads on the screen. Anyway. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. I'm going to make a game inspired by A Quiet Oftentimes, Place. Oftentimes, could audio put plays put... a huge role, just like the movies. Listen, listen. I had said, like, Alien, uh, Alien... Isolation? Is that the one with the, the placing camera audio stuff? I can't think anymore. But yeah, like Alien Isolation where like they hear you and stuff. Listen, I said that'd be lit. I think the team who did um what was the the horror game everyone was playing last year? Um the the morgue assistant, the the fucking dead people assistant, um what was Mortuary Assistant. Um that seems make you a paranormal a paranormal activity game, so that sounds probably kind of cool. Somebody service say to Danny, Dark damn, that hurts like heart. this one at the start of his games. Or <laughs> stream Alien Isolation again. This one. I've tried I to stream. I wish i him at the time that he was. I've tried to stream Alien like seven times. I'm going to keep pausing because I don't want to talk over it. So eventually I'll stop talking over it. <laughs> but um, I've tried to stream Alien Isolation like five times in like my stream career. And I just, I never commit to it. And I think I just realized like it's just not going to be for me. I think people like it. I just won't. Hear me outside with the mirror with 25%. Uh, then until the end, you still walk backwards, stuck in your ways. But at the end, you fi- uh, you finally grow up just as it's too late and the game ends with you looking at the future uh, with nothing. Li- look, we're getting existential. We're getting games. deep on this, dog. He would really only talk to me about play it. as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. Let's go for it. So you commit to it, dog. That at all, do some alien. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Jump. Honestly, I was going to jump because I felt lazy and I didn't want to walk back up. Oh, God. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay. I feel like it was a trophy or an achievement for not doing it. Say on an X starting at a... What the fuck? Uh, you walk around talking people down from pursuing a their... A room that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Keep one game unlocks a door in a completely separate game. 
normal game where you have to scream into a microphone every 15 seconds to keep playing. That, I, listen, often tell listen. Me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold I'll play that. or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Maybe you can just walk through the wall. Okay. You play as a loud, bodiless sound. Wait, there was so much to read. I want all these ideas. I want to play these ideas. Walk forward. Last time that <laughs> just walk forward is the name of the game. <laughs> Last time there were two towers. Uh, it didn't end too well. <laughs> Yikers! True that. True that though. Too soon. Too soon. Bro, we're not even American. <laughs> uh, I like these walls. I don't know why. I like these walls a lot. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Ooh. Uh, I can see that game as your character keeps falling asleep and you just have to just... Ha! Ha! There's a game I've been meaning to play. I picked it up recently. It is called Supermarket Shriek. And what the thing is, it's uh, you're like a goat and a guy in like a golf cart. And what you have to do is you have to scream into the mic to propel yourself forward. I think I could definitely play that game. I just don't know if I should play that game. All right, so he said it's a puzzle game, which means there's gotta be something I gotta do. Again, I'm prepared when a game like this, I prefer, I'm prepared for it. Oh, okay, there's a button here. Oh. Listen, I figured out the puzzle. You can't yell at me with that. You can't do that. That's really rude. I used to the game as your character. Okay, sorry about that one. Soon. Burb, the time. You're going to see it a lot. <laughs> Thank you for the clip. This is a satisfying orange. I'm not going to lie to you. Yo, I love the, the texture work in here. Man, I need to get back into 3D modeling. So I need to learn Blender. To be, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Oh, this is like in Minecraft where you dig into the wall, you can see all the, the, the lava. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Holy shit. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. <laughs> so uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either you think way, this is dull? I think that the point is the same is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? So like, there's the part of me sitting here wondering, ooh, hold on, we're back at this game. Like, what did this end up? Why did Coda stop making games, right? Was it just like, uh, let me mess with it and learn? And then as I progress, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Let me try a different thing. Let me try a different build and never finished a project. And then this ultimately leads to like, oh, we came back and all this was combined. And he's going to be like, and that's how Coda made Half-Life 2. Or, you know, that's obviously not that. But I'm like, interesting. What does this mean? What is this all? What are we getting at here? What are we getting at? Good questions, Danny? Hmm, you can answer soon enough. Okay. Okay. I want to nom the colors. I felt that. That blue is pretty nomable, man. Look at me and follow. You are now exiting. Uh -huh. Oh, wait, that was... So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. Interesting. 
fucking would see that bird. <laughs> what if Cody just died? Listen, I was hoping not. The great and lovely descent. I feel lost. This feels like a trap. I feel uncomfortable. I feel like I'm in a straitjacket. I feel like that's a house that is just far too out of my reach. That's what this game is Let's giving. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Sure. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. Okay. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Real quick, just with this map though, up close, out, out in the distance, didn't feel comfy, didn't feel comfy at all. This close, if it's a, like a coffee shop simulator, I'm running a coffee shop and I have to come give people their drinks outside and stuff, I feel like that would fuck, dog. That would hit different. That would hit very different. Um, what I do to open, this reminds me of the other world from Caroline. Okay, from Coraline, I see you. The prisoner got added to, oh, Dora's good for shit. Can I, who's your skin for? Or, or individual that reminds me we gotta talk about that trailer then but i'm all, i want to get to the game but uh, as a torture method the cia would use <laughs> just the next step to the white room no please to make all of these games coda is using an engine called source for mercenary like i don't know if i own mercenary source has Do certain I mercenary? things that it does well and Wait. it has certain things yeah that no it commanders does the base one of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors that's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. We don't want to go out there. We don't go down those stairs yet. We got to make sure we look at everything before the we go down the stairs. available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Fall damage? Nope. <laughs> this is spooky. Uh, I just need my date about to go on an existential adventure real quick. No, please. I want that light, that button. What is that? Can I get it? I can't. Okay. I miss you. This is like the room from the Stanley Parable, the, the like the museum level. It's also got some like it's giving Dune, but the maid really did her job. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's giving Dune, but the maid said, "I'm getting paid overtime this weekend." She said, "Look at these white walls." <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, lamb. Some random moth. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. My bad. Wait, don't put me in jail. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. Interesting. This is something that he and I used to but argue like, why? about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game. Why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it. And there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. There's there's gonna be this like aha moment, right? Where like something that's been said is like, Danny, if you really think this is like a very telling thing, I'm like, ooh, I, I didn't cross my mind. Cause right now I have nothing that's just like, bam, Coda is a vampire. You know what I mean? Year the game, oh my God. It's the puzzle again. Was there a game that took 365 days action complete? Um, yeah. Um, 
Wait, is you're the game? I'm thinking of a different one. What's the one that's like it's all dark browns and tans, but you play this little like scraggly black like silhouetted character? Um, my buddy Travis messaged me about it a long time ago. I'm like, I've never played it, but I think it actually took like real time, like real time throughout the day to, to complete type deal. I got out here on Twitch for this band on tour, and ironically, the building style in the photo is the same as the game. Yo, listen, freaking the freaking beginner's guy going on tour. The guy at the narrator is talking about. The guy the narrator is talking about sounds like a psychopath. He's just making funny games. <laughs> when he talks about Coda, makes you think he's dead. That's the one I'm. Th yeah, I, I could totally see it being dead. The longing. That's yo. Hold on, Racky came in and said, "Bam, I got you." That's the one. The long Damn. You had that at the ready, dog. Thanks. <laughs> Love these interpretations. Keep playing a while. All right, okay, keep playing. The exact same solution as the last time. So, so. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special. That the, there's, okay, hold on. Here is like, I made 3D models, but never made a game. Energy percolating, right? Um... There's the thing with the hitches, right? With the loading hitches. And anyone's ever, when you like load a game and then like the door shuts, you feel like that hit, that, that slight hit before you can actually move again. That's like, okay, in the world, everything just load on the other side of that door and then the door opens, right? I'm in the spot wondering now, was that just in the source code for Coda? Was that just like, here's the game I made, there's that hitch? Or was it like, oh, it didn't happen, but because I'm developing another person's developed games into one game, I'm going to add that hitch to like make it seem like it is just like a prototype and it's not ready. And now I'm per Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Quick fire. Bang. That's me. Ragged fucking goat. I hope you get a good rest and never stub your toe again. Damn. Verse show in love. I don't like these guys. I feel like they're going to judge me and not let me into a college I want to go to. Although I'm not going to lie. This is a room right here, dog. Check this out. You there. Did you come from up here, above? Hold on. Begins using a kind of dialogue. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me, uh, scoot this real quick. On the rest of the good or bad corner. Shit, I gotta change my overlay and stuff so I can find a good spot for this. Ah, it's so big. That's what she said. Put that up there. Hope y'all can read it. Okay. System that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. You there? Did you come from up above? What was up there? Uh, yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. There was an enormous prison I spent hours in. There were these floating colored blocks. I'm going to go with the fact that the game was modified to fit. Like you're not waiting for hours, but like, like that in the default game you would have been. I'm going to go with the spent hours in there. I have to use the other ones. Okay. They're enormous. I spent time. Um, that's the world above. You see, oh, hold on. Let's get, let's get a little, it's a little, a little loud for me now. Hold on. Let's try a little bit more. I don't know if that's too much for y'all. Uh, that's the world above. You've been there. Now, this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was really the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzles. I'd prefer not to tell you. After all, we've only just met. Yes, I did. Again, perfect. Now, please tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I, I don't remember how I solved it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. I didn't solve it. Someone else let me in. Trust me, you don't want to go through there. I, I, I... But just tell us now, stop blue ball. <laughs> uh, it could be Coda's interpretation of when one door closes, another one opens. I see that. Sometimes you got to close the door to open a window. If life closes the door, force it open. It's a door and no one tells you what to do. Me. Lie. Number one. Loaded answers. I got loaded answers, dog. I, I literally was going to be like, oh, yeah, I hit the switch. And then when I close it, the other one, like, I'm going to go with trust me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the, you don't go there. 
It's giving the vibes of if life gives you lemons, you give lemon, you give life their lemons back <laughs> because you don't need their lemons. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get through there. Oh god, I expected to. Okay, sorry, I didn't get to read it. That's on Burb. What are we in Norman's gym in Gen Three? Am I right? <laughs> Uh, make life take the lemons back. Hello, how'd you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes. Do you want to know how to solve it? No, no. We actually find the black space between the doors to be fair, uh, far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? Why do I care about the space between the doors? Actually, now that you mention it, I remember feeling strange. I passed through it. Huh. I don't recall a space between the doors. Why would I care about the space between the doors? There's a reason, but it may take time before you understand, which is fine. You'll see it again soon. Is that a threat? Love you to give us lemons. We genetically made that shit because we're God and, and no so one can set the one ones born to head the stars. Down to the final floor of the level. I know this ain't that this ain't that game. I'm just I am constantly on guard for jump scares, man. I don't uh, Yandari simulator? I was <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Okay. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He you told me all things in lampposts at some point in our lives. Honestly, every day of my life, still to this day, I'm not over that phase yet. That's a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. There is the, the part of me that thinks of Firewatch when I'm like, the game is over, but I'm waiting for it to move me to the next one, right? Where, like, I'm waiting for the, like, bam, like, title card of, like, this week. Um, give me a second. I got to blow my nose here. I just, I just, my tissues are across the room. I had to blow my chest. Sorry, hold on. Nose blowing in three, two, now. <gasps> All right. It wasn't like a big boogie. It was just like a... Damn, yeah! I'm standing, I think Swedes and Moth. Honestly, I wouldn't deny it. I'd believe it. I'd believe it too, man. I'd believe it. All right. All right. Um, But no, sorry. Um, I keep thinking of like Firewatch where it's just like, is that you in the tower? No. <gasps> I mean, that's the bad moment. It doesn't happen there. But where it's like, this mission is done. Bam. Title card of like, one week later. Or like, here's the date. Here's the whatever. Like the, the whatever Firewatch's things are, you know? Like I keep waiting for that to happen. They're like fades or cuts. But I'm also waiting for Coda to have made like a crazy, like, this game is not connected to the internet. Perfect. As you walk around, you can leave notes. I'm waiting for like a very out of, like not out of touch, but very different bubbly, bam, this is a Coda game, you know? Is it is connected? My apologies, my apologies. I thought I said it isn't. That's why I thought it was like a, I almost feel like it goes to show that when a game's just like, yeah, dude, there's nothing here. Or there's no internet connection. That's like out of the norm. Nice room, not. Fuck you, bitch. I didn't build this place, you did, Coda. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written.
Now, sweet, he said it's not connected. So you told me a liar? Cause I thought I said it's not. He said it's not. You talking out your ass cheeks? Oh. No. I never said it was. I just said the intro claimed it was connected to the internet. Right, well you said it is you said it you said it is connected, but you're telling me that's what it said. I'm <laughs> Turn him off. I'm just saying he read it he said it to me as if he was just like to reiterate To reiterate Don't die Fuck you. By Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento where I grew up. <laughs> Not the. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw him I'm, working on I'm this sorry. very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away, I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a Jesus bit Christ trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over enthusiastic, but he was very gracious about it and very patient with me, and I cooled off eventually. Reasonable. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, I bet to does. me they can be a sense of the hope. blinking. <laughs> I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic <laughs> that in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda skip. often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. I can't jump. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. Felt that. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Recognize me, please. Listen to that guy. I didn't see what that guy said. I don't want to read. Uh... Ooh, look at this. With Dakota, sometimes you need an outlet uh, to the overwhelming knowledge and thoughts in your brain, a way to express things without having to rely on others. That's why, well, I guess the rely on other part kind of matters, but that's why I do YouTube shit. Sometimes I want to talk about games. I'm really bad at wanting to be good, so, like, I have to do scripts, but, like, if I, I think if I was better at, like, public speaking and, like, I think I ramble a lot where I think of one thing and then my brain says, oh, but you didn't mention this, which leads me down a whole other rabbit hole. Like, I'm sure you can notice that listening to the podcast, but, um, that's pretty. Um, no, if I could, like, just finish playing a game and then sit down and record my thoughts and then edit that, I think I'd, I'd be a lot, I'd have a lot more reviews out. But, like, right now I've been working on a script for one that I'm, like, I'm struggling to not make the review longer, but I'm just, like, I want to make sure I have all my thoughts or I feel like I've said everything in these couple sentences, you know? Like, this could be a one-minute review, but I don't think it should be. I think it could be a little bit longer. At the end of this know. level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, Let after me jump exploring down. a theme that, you know, he might find difficult... Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. I like this. I and like, I like this dark area the between the doors, a space between spaces. Before you move on, you get to pause just for a moment 
a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here, to step back and connect the pieces together, to grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Stop whispering at me. Stop hitting on me. Should I be like, please, narrative for stories. I really want to see your reaction. The chat is the point where words spam. They really do, dog. That's what they're all about. These deep comments that this game spawns. I love it. It's pretty great. I'm really thinking, dog. Sup, Gurus Reddick was popping. We're learning about existential crises. Uh, when I'm actually given the chance to talk and have a proper conversation, I much prefer to talk about more important and proper things. I act chaotic to ensure I bring a smile to people. Uh, but then I get the chance to be to be me. Uh, I much prefer the calm world. Uh, I said it once, and I'll s and I will know. I said it once. I will know everything the universe has before I die. Damn, that's uh, that is an expectation, guy. That's a lot to know. I don't know if brains are that big. I like having fun, but deep commas are awesome. Don't we love it? I'm okay. Twisted my ankle. Don't work. Oh no, Renick! Don't cry. Did you put it, uh, one of those braces? Out? Who is who's typing in my skull? Stop! No more typing. We're th take me out, lamppost. I'm a moth. Leave me. Are you there? Please say something. I can't be anything. I just need to know to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, 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 Wait, oh, oh, hey, hey wait a minute. It's wait a second. Spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Wait a second. Wait a minute. This one's about to get uh this is about to be a little spicy version. You know. Got some ice cream. I got some ice. Oh, ice cream. You get some ice cream too. I got some ice and a brace on it. Okay, God, I hope it feels better. Thank you for the hydrate. I see it work this time. Oh, should have should have should have it's true. What a hang with it. Ooh, nice couch. Let me out! I'm not a prawn star! I'm not a prawn star! Ooh, look at that wall! What club am I going into? Oops, 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 yeah. Oops, 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 the creepers try to see like this is it the whole game and there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it you just walk to the end of a hallway except for some reason Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture and i don't know why but he decides he needs to revisit this prison he's going to well. start over use the same assets turn it into something else okay cool here's version two okay oh shit Laying out the room, I see you, I see you. Okay, uh, mm. we first try to go in the center of the room. Uh, how about a TV with surround sound, baby? That's not a TV. What about along the walls of the room? Uh, let's put a huge picture of a horse. I'd really like a washing machine. 10 stoves lined up along the, 10 stoves. Those are couches! I think we should light up this room a bit. Uh, a skylight, full ceiling window. Uh, let's open this baby up. I'm thinking a tw uh, 10 by 12 recessed electric cinch in six inch soft LED ceiling light with fluorescent trim. Uh, we'll put live Tesla coils in each corner. Bam. Give me the Tesla coils. It's not a Tesla coil! I need a table. Uh, who are you? Where exactly are you go, uh, doing? Where exactly are you doing this from? I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making any difference. Tables were invented in 1935. <laughs> um, none of my choices are making a difference. Oh, 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 oh! Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. Oh, 
Oh shit! So, okay, Wait! He throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from it's a different direction. It's the idea, SCP. <laughs> Art is something I don't care to keep. Damn, damn. What, what's going on over here? We do have to say something. Knowledge can make one heartless to what's around that. Gee, hold on. Holy shit! Wait a second. I am already doing over here. Hold on, wait, is this one of those? No, I want to look around. I want to see if it was like super liminal or, or, not, or a viewfinder, not super liminal. Well, no, I don't think it's super liminal. I don't think super liminal does that that much. First click on this table. Oh, okay. Good, go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Okay. Now turn the floor lamp in this room off and turn it back on. This is one of those ones where it's like, yo, read the caption, look at the bottom, look at my forehead, bang. Go to the left side sofa, move it over a little. So I guess this one. Finally touch the shelves. That's it, in a real prison, the escape will now open, return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Okay. Return. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Oh. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded Ooh. on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their the world. puzzle and the one, door. Like, at what point do you just go? Eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this or prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular oh, mechanism shit. of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. Okay. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. This shit's somber. I'm I'm now ready for this like Coda never liked anything he made that's why he gave up on everything and he never realized he always just wanted to find the next thing to make then finish the last one but the next thing never brought the saddest like it never brought him satisfaction because each new one was just a reminder they never finished anything else I think is where I'm I'm, I'm swinging right now my Superman mode Hello, who is this? Uh, hi, it's me. I'm from... I'm you from after you escaped the prison. You're me? Dot, dot, dot? So you're trapped in this prison too? Yes, I was in the furniture maze. Yes, I'm in... It's a I was in the escape tutorial. And so this is what Kuhn the reverse wants, prison. is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Hmm. Um. I was in the escape tutorial. That's where I am right now. Oh, I'm so glad to know that I get out eventually. What's it like to escape? Actually, I'm already forgetting what being in the prison was like. It's strange, but in a way, it's kind of a, I kind of miss being in the prison. It feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Oh God. Um.
I feel like I like three, but I don't think I felt three. I kind of feel two. Because I feel like th th in the way I was just like Coda made games that he never finished, I feel like I played a game that I didn't finish with the prison. Because the prison was like, when you want to escape, psych, we just let you out, you know? Where were two? Why was there anything about it that you felt good about? Being here sucks. True, maybe I only think things... Only like things once. Uh, I don't have them any... Okay, maybe I only like things once. I don't have them anymore. Uh, I was comfortable. I feel it's... I knew its limits. I knew my place. I much feel excited about getting out. The promise of freedom. That's three. It's the only thing that matters to me. It's the only thing keeping me going. Excited doesn't really do it justice. Exactly, you have something you care about, something to look forward to. You won't always have something that you care about as much as this. Just be with that enthusiasm for a bit. Let it ooze into your flesh. Let's do that one. If you're me, then did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? No, I think I'm the first person to call back. Yes, I did get a call. Thank you for the hydrate. Ah, uh, that's how it escaped. No. You tell me how to get out. Maybe I can find you. What do I have to do? To get out, all you have to do is be sincere. To get out, you need to tell me how you feel right now. To get out, just talk with me for a bit. Tell so me how you feel right now. What? Th that'll free me? How does that work? Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Just tell me how you feel. It will make sense. Listen, you can't know until you're out. Okay. Okay, I feel afraid that nothing will ever change. Go on. Oh, shit. Okay. Go on. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if we are on... I was trying to go to 2011, but like we're still in 2009. So like, so what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? Okay. If you're I know you guys, you're having a conversation, so I didn't. I decided I'm not going to read each paragraph back to back, but I'm glad you guys are having a conversation about existential shit. It's crazy. Coda's puzzle with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Shit. Oh, hello. So you spilt your... Blood? My goodness. I'm glad I was all heck that you showed up. Thought I might be having a, to clean this entire house up by myself. And right miserable that would have been. Everyone knows lonesome hands make lousy homes. You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, oh, including it? this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. Now you just might be getting a little ahead of yourself there. No. Uh, why don't we start cleaning and then decide whether you can do it all night. I'll finish up here. In the meantime, could you please clear the table? Easy. Much nicer. That's the table I want to see. Now could you please run to the, ba uh, the bedroom and make the bed? The door's closed. This way. Hello? Your bathroom? Good lord. Where'd you make the bed? I'll be right. I'll make my bed. 
by in there. Uh, why don't you straighten out the rug a bit? Do you enjoy being a house cleaner? Uh, how'd you end up doing this job? Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen a house this messy. How'd you end up doing this job? Would have could have died because of our main character is Coda. So, okay, right? So I'm I'm, there was a moment there I was like, hmm, are we Coda? Are we, is this our Booker DeWitt? So, uh, spoilers. <laughs> is this our Booker DeWitt moment? About to finish a game, he feels like a new artist, like a new man. I'd be lit. I'd be lit. Code is like a pen name type deal. I would come out and straighten these pillows out here. Okay. Pillows. Oh, I was ready to click them all. Oh dear, it looks like someone spilled a drink over on by the couch. Uh, maybe mop that up. I'll use my hands. <laughs> I don't need a mop. Feel compelled to share an inc uh, incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Uh, make it especially cheesy. This song is kind of nice too. No. <laughs> no, I was stupid. Sorry. Never mind. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me the joke. Tell me the joke. Right now. Tell me what you were going to say. If you don't, you're blue balling me with that joke. Tell me the joke. Fine, I'll do the dishes. Tell me the joke. Tell me the joke. Tell me the joke. Anyway. <laughs> I'm stuck on the fridge. Nice. All right. Uh, there's still books scattered on the floor of the bedroom. If so, would you put them back? Well, why didn't you tell that what was in there, dog? Damn, look at that quick. Perfect. Perfect. Now then, how about you come clear these dishes After off? After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you, and eventually cohere into something meaningful. Is chores ever end? Darling, let me tell you something. Whatever work you do, you have absolutely got to own it, otherwise it owns you. So why don't we be uh, why don't we be with the task at hand and leave the future chores to future you? Uh, present you once I know that Coda really present you once to smooth out the rug of the better. All his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was like grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. So I had a cheesy thought. Uh, I was going to say that it occurred to me that one house is a lot like one soul. You take care of it, it takes care of you, huh? Uh, don't know why I feel so weird about saying that. I get it, that's a weird thing to say to someone you just met. Yeah, you're right, that's pretty cheesy. But there's a bit of truth in it, no? Anyway, so housekeeping. Let's keep doing this. Please clean up the books. Hmm. I'm glad he made this. I'm glad he found some peace. Did you go over and straighten them up a bit? Get these uh, question. See, we're in the spot where we're, but, we're, we're redoing course, tasks. Can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Okay. I was, I was gonna say, I don't know how long it's gonna keep going. I was waiting for something to like break and just like, and you're trapped. You can't find a way out and like, like something like that, right? Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. Hmm. Hmm. This Items you love it. Members only prices. Goofy. goofy. Why'd you come here today to, to study? Was to improve your life? Uh, why am I going in class? 
Was to get a better job? Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. You came here to become perfect. Yeah. This workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. Perfect? I want, uh, I want your friends and the people in your life to look at you and think, Wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Right now, who do you think about that way in your own life? Who do you know who is well-developed as a person that'll make you feel disgusted with yourself uh, compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, ungrateful? I intend to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how do we do it, but how do we do it effortlessly? This is easy. It is so easy. It is so easy. About halfway through the game, the Being perspective perfect shifts. is effortless. Whoa! Being perfect is effortless. This is the key. How do I achieve it with no effort? The teacher. But I, Suddenly, I can't pick. You discover oh, I can. Okay. teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. Oh, shit, look at that. Um, on the way, I told an elderly person to start contributing to society. I still love you. It's just that you make me feel cold on the inside. Being alone must be awful. Let me tell you right now, if it, is, if it isn't effortless, then it's not the right answer. I still love you. You make me feel cold on the inside. So it seems like yellow is the right answers. I'm like, what are we doing here? Yo, Dragon, good morning. Sorry, we're stuck in an existential crisis here and we're seeing the world for what it is. Um, you were torturing yourself trying to find the right solution in your life. You're not doing it right. Yo, so yo, JJ, what's poppin', dog? Uh, do you understand that you won't be happy until you love me? This is, this is for you. So you got only one thing. What is the easiest, simplest path forward? Ill, I'm developing a cis gross. <laughs> um, I feel like I want to pick the yellow answers. That's what's like calling me, but I like, down, obviously. Down. Yo, thanks, Renick. We're doing a thing. Uh... <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyone want to do some uh, ecstasy after this? There is no truth. There is no path. What if I'm not a good teacher? Do what is easiest. Do what is simplest. Feel what is true. Holy shit, you guys. Something is coming out of the back of the room. Look out. Nothing, no one is coming for you. It's going to destroy you. Everyone run, run! I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. It's breaking my brain. There's, 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 there's a lot going on up there. I don't, I don't even know. This one took a lot longer uh, than all the others. For the game is causing us to have deep, meaningful conversations. <laughs> well then, <laughs> uh, too bad. Oh, it was either lightning or womp womp. Listen, what did it make? It was four Y'all can't just enjoy the good the times. One. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex. So I remember I found that a little strange at the time it's the stage it's the stage wait i'm not going through yet Ooh. i feel like i just put on like like noise canceling headphones all of a sudden just like whoop. Jesus, okay. I, I thought it was gonna happen as it got closer. I didn't expect it to happen that far back. <laughs> the, por the performance is beginning. Places, please. In this scene, you'll be playing as me. We, uh, we are at a gathering of professionals. First, you'll start out leaning against the wall. Okay. Good, stay right there. 
The woman across the room in this chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream to photo uh, photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her, to gain something to succeed. Go on, say something to her. Wanna bang? Oh, sorry, I have to leave. Uh, where's the bathroom? Hello. Hello, that's it? That's not a conversation? You need to actually converse with her, be a human being, do it again. I'm super, super scared right now. I like you. Here are all of my hopes and dreams. Wanna bang? <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew what I wanted. I was confident. For some reason, it was just that one moment, but I was confident. Maybe it's that you need a better feeling of the setting. Uh, there were a lot of people around us. Uh, I'll give you some props to work with. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Uh, some props to work uh, Props to work with. These cones that bounce uh, when you touch them will represent the people nearby. Uh, you must work really hard to get where you are. Uh, I bet you've learned to lean into the pain. What are some sacrifices you've had to make? You're messing it all up again. You'll freak her out of this conversation gets that personal that quick. Do you not realize how important it was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this again. Everything was riding on this. Hmm, I want to try something. Try stepping back from the stage. Oh, oh, oh. Did it drop the curtain on me? Do I keep going? But also, how you been, Dragon? I feel like it's been a minute, dog. I hope you're doing well. Sorry, it was a very narrative-heavy one, so we're... The game ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. Um. But what can you do? After this, Koda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Hmm. Mobius trip. <laughs> uh, to play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Click to begin the game. Hold on. Well, hold on. <laughs> that was not what I expected for a game that wants me to keep my eyes closed. Um, I made drums in a stage like this, uh, though it was not this big. <laughs> Want to bang? We're in prison again. Aren't we always, though? Aren't we always? Uh, that's some existential shit. Uh, we're always in prison. <laughs> so then Burp said it. <laughs> Would it be your own minor physical room? Uh, yeah, been a minute. I've uh, been busy, but yeah, we're all good on my end. And damn, this game is deep. It is. It is. This game's doing something different, dog. I feel like. I was in this spot of thinking about it as a game and now I don't know. I feel like I've gotten so much like here's some life advice where I'm like, shit, that was, I didn't write any of it down. I like, and now I forgot it all. And now I have to replay the game to pick it back up. You know what I mean? What's going on? Do you actually want me to close my eyes or help? I'm blind. I can't see anything. What's going on? Actually, should I actually close my eyes? Please, someone talk to me. Please tell me how to solve this. Please don't let this be forever. Ah! Hmm. 
Uh, I can't see you anything. Probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And they, there is a solution, by the way. They said we had to solve this. There's no hand on this one. I have no idea where we are. Ah! It is the puzzle door. It is. It sure is. Um, help, I'm blind. I don't think I picked that one yet. Someone get help. I don't know why it's happening to me too. There's a giant door and then my vision went black. Uh, please don't let this be forever. I think I did that one though. Be quiet and help me find the shield. Whisper. Maybe, maybe, maybe don't yell. SS oh, the whisper though. Whispers of whatever game earlier. What's going on? What what is going on? Um oh wait, can I go in here? Finish the game! Finish the game! No way to stop us being someone that is honest. I'm bursting with creativity. Ah! Hold on, hold on. We're gonna I gotta go talk to the scrub upstairs. Uh, the only way to stop it is to speak to someone who's honest and bursting with creative energy. I can't keep, uh, I can't keep making these. My work is always fun. Uh, my work is always fun. No, no, that isn't truthful. Okay, my bad. I lied. I'm sorry. I'm gonna die. I gotta tell the truth. Stop lying. In. Right, let me explain how you're supposed to do this. No, I got it. On either side of the room are elevators, which go up to an upper level. You have to go up, walk over to the person who's standing there, and then select dialogue option number I two. I got it. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So where's that coming from? But then even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. No, I ain't different. Here was the point in my relationship with Koda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. I don't feel it anymore. I'm out of ideas. It's draining me. Oh, shit. Keep going, keep talking. I haven't been honest. I can't figure out how to say the thing. I thought it was going to be easy. I can't figure out how to say the thing. You're doing it. It's working. Shit. Not a sickness a doctor can cure. Mental health man is hard, dude. It's fucking wild. You're doing it. It's working. I'm alone. I'm stuck in it. I have to work harder. I'm stuck in it. Yeah. You're going to be okay. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. Oh, good. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Hmm. Where am I? What is this? 
What is this? Oh. The dog doesn't need to be seven with a degree. Well, I mean, legally, yes, I think they do. But maybe perhaps someone helpful doesn't need to have a degree, I think might be the answer. Or maybe. <laughs> uh, the worst battle a person can fight. Uh, it sucks. It never goes away. It only becomes more permanent. FYI, this game can be a bit uh, taxing emotionally to some. So take breaks if you all need to, please. Yeah, good call. Good call. But uh, we chillin'. We chillin'. We chillin'. What is this? Where did this land come from? How do I get out of here? Hello, is anyone there? Where did this island come from? Oh. Is it a person? How lovely. Oh. It's been a long time since I talked to anyone. What's wrong? You look lost. Yeah, where the hell are you? I go completely out of ideas. When I try to create, I feel empty. I have nothing left to give to my work. Oh no. What happened? Did something change? There's a machine that kept me going and it stopped. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me to start it again. I like that one. You're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. You have to take me to it. I need to see it. I know why it stopped. You need to take me to it. I can do that, but there's if a the problem. Last game featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations. This one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? So, uh, uh, I could do that, but there's a problem. It's guarded by a difficult puzzle. If you could help me solve the problem, or if you help me solve the puzzle, we'll find the machine. Deal? Is a deal, deal, or it doesn't matter what I say, does it? We're going to end up there one way or another, right? That sounds like the answer Coda would give. Which one is scary? Is someone who can never start anything or someone who can never stop doing stuff? I guess it all depends on the subject matter, honestly. Uh, I'm going to go with, with three. I Okay, well, Interesting. So it's still turned into deal. Hmm. Perfect. Come along. I'll show it to you. Because from my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated Excuse me. he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so... He didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. How can you tell me how to do it? Will you first you have to close the door, first you have to open the door, first you have to press the switch on the so first you have to open the door. Now what? Now you have to close the door. Now you have to close the first door. What's next? Just close the first door, now just open the first door, now just press the switch here. That was so simple! You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. I can't believe I never solved this before. Okay, here we are. What are you talking about? There's no machine here. There's just words and some walls. 
There's no machine here. Trust me, you'll see. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that the game development is simple and joyous, and that you love it 100% of the time. Making games is simple, sure. Making games is easy, all right. Making games is effortless. Making games is easy. That feels wonderful. But it wasn't true. Why the walls just crumble? Why did I feel so awful when I said that? Don't worry about it. Just keep talking. Keep saying that creation is easy. I want to go back to bed just, just picking the answers. <laughs> By crashing, if it means uh, my art never needs to impact another, and I'm sure that's how Coda felt as well. Keep saying the creation is easy, okay? Uh, I want to make games. I feel completely energized. I'm constantly excited and enthusiastic about my work. It's easy. I never stop being easy. Yes, that's wonderful. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like... Video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. Okay. Never. That's a fact. Uh, pain breezes effortlessly off me. Any sacrifices made for my work are worth it 100% of the time. It always pays off eventually. Yes, more. Keep going. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. Let me save my work. I believe this unquestioningly. I'm a vessel for certainty. There's no shame, no fear. Uh, I believe this unquestioningly. That's it. I'm free. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Okay, the machine. Man, I'm glad to see you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You begin the interrogation whenever you like. I tend to be quick. I tend to be quiet. I tend to be brutal. I tend to be quick. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. <sighs> okay. What's the machine? Will it be punished? Hello? Where'd you find the machine? What has the machine been doing? How did you capture the machine? Do you know where the poisonous game's something? I'm gonna keep disappearing before I can read it. And of course, it's the machine. It's like a rusty, loud, worn out machine, and Code is just like, I'm fucking tired. I'm tired. You stopped. You stopped feeding us. Your work was keeping us alive. Your work was keeping us healthy.
Those people out there, can you imagine what pain you've put them through? It was only because of your creation that any of us make it through every day. Uh, how could you possibly go back to th trusting you to do this job? I don't want to pick any of these. And then I'll haul this feeling. I hate that. I do the same thing. I hate that I'm just like fucking Coda. Self reflection's nice, right? In a good way? Uh, bright sides, right? Excuse so what needs to happen. You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. You have to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. I've been so alone. I don't like that I have to pick these options. I don't like that it's me. All right. Uh, you need to go apologize. Just make sure I don't have an important message here. Okay, we're chill. Um, no, nothing. Think carefully. I know how to hurt you. I've seen the thing you fear. Jesus Christ. Uh, why am I the villain right now? I don't want to be the villain. I've seen the thing you fear. Wish I'd accept that mate, but I gotta go alone. I have whatever you need, even if I can't be in there. No, just be there. Damn. Y'all, y'all, y'all out here being like, you know what? I Feeling things tonight. All right, then I'll speak to them for you. My friends, my followers, my followers. It falls on me to deliver bad news. I have troubling revelation. It falls on me to deliver bad news. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refuses to admit that it is deliberately hurting us. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. Let us pay its retribution. Let us show it that we are not failures. Follow me, we will destroy the machine. Follow me, we will destroy everything that the machine has created. Ah. Uh. I'll make sure your work dies here. Code, I'll make sure you are known forever. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it, because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for him? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work?
When I tell you I can feel this one in my eyelids. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape game. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. I'm hearing indie dev accountability groups. Sounds pretty great. That's what I'm hearing. Put down your weapon. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something... I really felt like I'd done something good, like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. Um. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. Because I'm not quite ready for that. <laughs> um, Dan Chigao, what's poppin'? How you doing tonight? Um, I won't reread everything in chat there, but I was, I was like piecemealing it while I was like, paying attention, so I might have intertwined two conversations. Thanks, I really need that. I need that after that. Um, uh, Burb, I can't sit there and, and in any space be like, <laughs> I trade it a lot for sure. I am by no means, uh, once again, Regardless of what game you're playing, remember nine point ninety nine point nine 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 times, uh, your streamer's not a therapist. They are not qualified to have this conversation. Tell you what to do, when to do, whatever. Um, but I, I think in a in a place where there are a lot of creatives in the community, regardless of uh, when they can make stream and not, I think there are a lot of people who can relate to a lot of things that a lot of us feel. So I would just say. Yeah, uh, based on what Swede said and what Racky's saying, like, you may feel alone, but you don't have to be. And, and yeah, there's going to be things that you have to do, that you have to figure out, but also, like, I, I think having other people who understand or at least remotely understand what's going on is there. So, no, I don't feel bad. I mean, like I said, you were doing your thing. There wasn't, like, a, like, ah, oh, man, um, attention grabbing. Da, da, da. It wasn't anything like that. I just... That way, we're just, you know, talking helps. Exactly. Sweet. Simple as that. Ah, anyway, let's get more depresso. <laughs> so, Coda's last game that we know of. We're going to take his heavy burden, please. Oh, okay, so gotcha, 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 gotcha. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. This room actually has a maze in it. 
I want a screenshot of like five minutes into stream Danny and then like two hours into stream Danny just next to each other so we can uh we can see that <laughs> that transition. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what is that? Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Sweet agreed. Crying? That shit fucks. Real talk. And, and like growing up in a spot where like, yeah, you're a man, you can't cry. Dog. There are nights where like, I won't have a reason. I just like, I'm, it feels real good to cry right now. And that shit hits different. Seriously. Don't hesitate to cry. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. Yeah. But that I was game wondering had that. an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me. Because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. Fuck. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. Thank you. I appreciate it, friendo. You also can't go back, you have to go forward. So like, I was like, Jet. Um, so there's an error editing all of Coda's games. Yeah, so I don't know how long into the stream you got here, Dancer Guy, but basically the whole thing is the narrator, their friend Coda was just like, hey, I got this, or yeah, Coda's like, I have this folder of games, here you go. Um, and the narrator's like putting them all together and we're seeing like step by step, like here's what Coda made and here's what Coda made next and here's what was happening in this game. He's like, but Coda left you in the spot where this game was incomplete. You couldn't finish it or you couldn't progress. So I modified it so you can complete it or at least see the end of this game, right? So yes, yeah, so, a good handful of them are modified by the narrator to be like, so you can see more of Coda's vision. Here's that. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, door, we could have done it. Meaning that it's literally impossible to night. solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me. The idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem but I can open this door for you so let me do that was I a failure for not understanding this game I, mean, I don't know why I would be it's not like everything needs to have a solution but I feel it somehow I feel like I failed and I don't understand why I remember it's June of 2011 it makes sense when I say my face feels heavy. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? I don't I don't know how else to describe it. I just that's that's all I can really like feel. It's a lot, I get it. Yeah. Who put this on the wheel? Sweet motherfucker. Who over overwhelming games give me this game? What? Y'all just like Y'all good? <laughs> Do we wanna you wanna hug it out or something? Wanna meet at a con and just have a group cry session or something? 
gather up under the blankets and just <laughs> behold depression. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, my face feels heavy. <laughs> I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing... I was like, I was going to finish a script and like record a video tonight after stream. And I don't think I can. I don't think I could. I don't think I could. Myself. <laughs> I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew. It wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking I at I want to play the... Work. We can pause for a womp womp. As long as it's not interrupting, we can play a womp womp. We we all deserve a womp womp. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... Hell yeah, he says. <laughs> I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was. There's, uh, I, I haven't done the like, let me sit and think about like, what's going on here. There's this like, I, I'm sure there's a word for like the type of friend. You ever have the friend who is kind of only your friend when it's convenient? Like you have your circle of friends and you have like the circle outside of that, right? Where like my entire circle of friends is like, inaccessible, unavailable, not around, whatever, then you go to the next layer. And those people are important to you once that layer is broken. But then once you put the wall back up of that first layer of friends, the immediate friends, you're kind of back. Like you're like, sorry, you're back on the second ring. You know what I'm talking about? That sounds shitty, but I think we all kind of, like, I think we can all think of a person that's like that second tier friend. You know what I'm talking about? And I, I feel like right now, the narrator, it seems weird, right? Like, I feel like code is that to the narrator, but not, like, they're not aware of it. I feel like, hmm, how to say it? This guy's like, I want to be there for code. I want to be there. I want to, like, help share his, his passions and his games and everything, and I want to be there and get to know him. But, like, I feel like there's a gap where it's like either Coda not wanting it or the narrator not trying hard enough. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? That that sounds like a little like off. That's not. I don't think that's off the beaten path of what I think is happening. But I feel like I don't have another way of of culminating that into a thought. You know? There's a stick air around this game that you could breathe it uh, without being there. I have a person that only talked to me in the past three or four years just to get some info out of me, and then when I try to mess up, yeah, yeah. So you got a dancer guy. Or even some of us are. The, like I know I'm definitely that for some people. I'm definitely that for some people. I always think back to... It's a weird example. But... I mean, we're diverging it. But maybe ranting will like... <laughs> Unweight in my face. <laughs> but there was a guy uh, I used to go to church with. He was... I would not say he was the popular guy. He was an asshole. No one liked him. He was a jerk. But he was very outgoing. Like him and I had a lot in common with our personality, except he intentionally was an asshole to people. And I remember we had a lot of things in common. We both like Pokemon. We both like Transformers. But it seemed like anytime we'd have those things to bond over, if anybody else was around, it didn't work. It didn't it didn't fit, right? Because like if he was talking to someone else about Transformers, I'm like, oh, that's really cool because I thought this. He's like, no, I'm not talking to you. You're not important to me. But if no one else was around, we could have that full-fledged conversation, right? But then also he was like, let's bully Danny in front of all these other people because now I have like an audience to show off to, right? And I remember there was a point when he went to college, I went to college, separate places. Um, the only thing I would see is his interactions on Facebook. And I'm like, man, he is treating so many people like he would me. And he had that keyboard warrior, like, I, I have defense of a computer screen in front of me so I can say whatever to anybody. That shit sucked. Like, that, there was just a point, like, after college, I'm like, why do I not have this guy blocked? It's a shitty human, you know what I mean? That's dumb. Uh, yeah, I don't talk to you anymore. Good, good for you. I might be that Steam Nexus as for tomorrow. You can use a rest. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, shoot him, whatever. I just probably won't read it till tomorrow. So whatever works for you. <laughs> It's like an error thinks he's helping Coda, but at the same time, it feels invasive, and I don't know why. Yeah, no, I feel that. No, that's a good way to say it, Super, where it's like... 
it almost feels like gossip, right? Where like he wants to see the games, he wants to see what like this guy has made. But then while he's playing, and he's like, "Man, I want to support this guy." And I like, I think, I think we're painting this image of an area that I don't think is correct. I don't think we haven't finished the game, so it could be correct. But I see that right. We're like. You want the hot gossip. You want you want you know what's the tea, dog? What's going on with you? What's been happening over these four years of game development? And like, I don't know. So went the theory that uh, he is Coda and he couldn't fix himself. Yeah, I I totally see that. I totally see that. I think I don't, I wouldn't say that's what I think is happening, but if it is, I'd be like, yeah, no, that checks out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's wrong. Until I know it's not wrong, I'm like, shit, nah, he was right. He was right. You had it. You had it. That a Coda's game ended. In, oh, listen, I I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of that. I don't know what I don't know what's gonna end here. All right, my face feels a little lighter. Let's go. <laughs> and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt some... By the way, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here tonight. <laughs> How like I had faith. If you're watching on YouTube, go follow on Twitch. Thanks. <laughs> Shit. Where did I screw up? After this show, I want to go to therapy. Honestly, honestly, I might need one of those BetterHelp sponsors, man. I might, need, I might be like, hey, we just, I shoot an email like BetterHelp. They're like, oh, what's up? I'm like, we just played beginner guy. Like, we get it. All right, let's work on a sponsorship. <laughs> get you that discount code. Ha. Dear Davey, thank you for your interest I am in the me. reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. I made me want to cry, actually. Like, I'm... It's really sad. <clears throat> Fuck. I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt, <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. I hate that it's so quiet. Like, that doesn't make me not want to cry anymore. <laughs> and the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For yeah. a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. Fuck. I was kind of right. I wasn't really right, but I, it was like the the direct the ballpark, the ballpark next door to the right ballpark. You so infected my personal space that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere hidden between games. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? 
giving them something that is not yours to give, violating the one boundary that keeps me safe. Will you stop changing my game? Stop adding lampposts to them? See, now I don't know if that's literal or figurative. Like he's adding endings because the lampposts are the end of his game. He puts a lamppost at the end of his games. But he's like, this one wasn't meant to have a lamppost. And you keep giving them the means to get the lamppost. You're giving them an end. You're not supposed to get through that door. But you let them through the door. You made a lamppost. <sighs> yeah, dog. You take that line in multiple ways. Fuck. And then you stopped. And I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. Would you simply let them be what, what they does that are? Mean? When I'm around you, I am physically ill. You desperately need something that I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process. The fact that you think I'm frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. Fuck. I said this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. Fuck. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you're wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. Dude, he's been projecting this entire time. Fuck. Coda didn't end himself, or the narrator did it to Coda. Our narrator is a parasite that ruined Coda. And you finally see what I'm talking about. Don't say anything. Oh, shit. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing and I'm doing it again right now. Like I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Yeah, mocha fee. <laughs> Thanks. Damn, dude! Ah!
Now it's a very, it became like a very, uh, someone said it. Someone said the same thing I was thinking about it. Uh, these were the narrators are spewing, starting to turn toxic. At least that's how it feels. Yeah, it became a very like selfish thing, right? And I think about it because I know I've done it. And I can't sit here and think of a, a particular circumstance. But I think of I wanted to do this thing. And someone said, like, please don't don't do that because you're doing it for X, Y, Z reasons. And I came up with another reason so I could be like, well, now I'm not doing it for this reason. I'm doing it for this reason. So I'm still going to do the thing I wanted to do. But it's not because I want people to da 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 da. It's because I want you to feel good about yourself, you know, like. I, so a very selfish perspective right because like i, I not again this game is gifted to me so i don't know what this game runs in my head i've created the idea this game is like a seven dollar game might be might not be someone correct me if i'm wrong but like the perspective i have and i'm still at the spot where i don't know how much of this is real people and characters right like is this just two characters in a game code is a character the narrator is a character like oh these are things like this is an actual narrative we came up with this to tell a story but depending how real it is saying the person who developed this game or developed this game put it all together to sell it on steam is like hey by the way i'm making money so i can talk to you again like that that feels icky that feels really gross because even if it's just like like it feels weird to bring up the completionist, but the like, yeah, we collect all the money to eventually donate it. He's like, I'm getting all the money from Steam to eventually donate it to Coda to make his next game. But then like that feels so ignorant to what Coda had been saying. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't I don't know where that stands. That's weird. I I want a solution. I want to know what's happening, and I hope that's in the epilogue. But like fuck, around ten bucks. Okay. And I don't know what Steam conversion. I don't know how much Steam uh, Steam takes versus like Epic or anything. Like what that like what the developer developer gets out of ten bucks. But uh, everything narrator said uh, about being alone, about needing others, but not wanting others. It makes you more comfortable. David the narrator and Coda are fictional characters. Okay, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I'll take that. <laughs> because this is the thing. This is one of those things that I feel like I'd open on Twitter and be like, damn. Someone did that? Fuck. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Stop putting in lampposts. Fuck. That shit hit different. Where are we going? Right, based off real circumstances and emotions, Davey felt at the time, but his fictional start. Okay, okay. More, I could take that. More, I assume it came from somewhere. More, more, more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Uh, I much would have preferred never knowing whether this was true or false. Honestly, I kind of feel that. I feel that, Burb. I get that. Yeah, I blame Swede. He put this one on the radar. I'm adding some wholesome My Little Pony game to the Wheel of Shame, by the way. I don't know what it's going to be, but <laughs> definitely a palate cleanser. Ooh, it's a pretty train. I assume how says for Burb then super. I guess uh, like and I, I'm don't make, I'm don't make it seem like I'm projecting on Burb's thoughts here. I just what what Burb said and where I came from it is the idea that there's actual human emotion behind. I'm not saying there's not if it's fictional. I'm not saying we're taking away from the actual human emotion, but thinking that there's an actual person going through both perspective as the person making the games and feeling like they're like on a leash for the narrator and then the narrator being like I'm still a good person just trying to help my friend type you know what I mean um I think knowing that it didn't actually happen to a person that you know is Im immortalized in a game type deal solution but. solution solution
definitely is. David's going through a lot after releasing the Stanley Parable, and part of that has probably found itself in the story in certain ways. And I feel that. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. Being uh, ambiguous makes it, now, makes it feel better. It Having it be real would show more about humanity and emotions. Just feels like the fucking puppets, like it's all some fairy tale. This is telling toy. me to stop. I, like I said, yeah, Don't I see show that. people what a shitty person you are. I see that for sure. They'll hate you. I feel like the tiling could be smaller. Some big floor tiles, you know what I mean? Maybe like half the size. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> Brighten the mood with some game dev talk. You know what I'm saying, sweet? You know what I'm saying, sweet. This very much reminds me of that level from Stanley Parable. You know, like the office building? Is that where I'm at? That's what this feels like. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. Damn. What now? I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up. I think I'm, I'm, I'm hate to cut off in the middle of the sentence, but I think I'm feeling what Burb was feeling. Because I think there was like this pit in like my chest and in my stomach that felt like the, the ambiguity felt like a pushing like a, like a force that was keeping me emotionally invested and i'm not uninvested but i feel like the weight on my shoulders the, the, the my face feeling heavy thing isn't there right you know what i mean because now i'm like you're right the, the fairy tale comparison right of like another one to go on the shelf i get that right i think i was said very well i see that yeah we're just like yeah, sorry right, sweet you're banned it's fine okay. nobody played jkr <laughs> <So> <laughs> You ever someone know what to say? Probably a bad thing for streaming, but no, no, I, I greatly appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. I think, uh, I think we're all Gucci. I think we'll be all right. But yeah, I know Burby, so you might have to step away to your thing, dog. Whatever works best for you, homie. Go grab a thing of strawberries. Bring me some too. I could use some strawberries. A lot of natural sugars in there, you know. Let me out of the door. Please let me out. Let me out. Okay. I'm 
Enjoy this last bit? Oh, I don't know if I like that. Hello? Okay. That was an ending. That was, that was, uh... Like, for anyone who might have popped in later and been like, "What's going on here? What's like, what happened?" So that laser um, was in one of Coda's earlier games, and that was like the end of the game, where if you stepped into the laser, um, you you died. Like, thing was like, "Are you willing to sacrifice yourself for the for the ship or, or whatever?" How it was phrased. Um, but what happened is you would jump in the laser and die, but then eventually you would just spawn back in the room behind you. And if you jumped in again, it would just like teleport you up. Like it would just you would just fly up straight up. You could see the whole map. And then it seemed like it was repurposed there in the epilogue to be like Um I don't know if I can say the S word on Twitch. I think I can in, in proper tastes, right? Um Yeah, I guess, I guess just him realizing what he put Coda through, where Coda was at after everything he did, and deciding that all they could do was jump into the laser. And then the, sim the symbolism of rising up felt very different the second time around. Uh, 
the never right action takes just an action. Did the narrator say anything since he said he was leaving? Uh... I'm trying to think of the dialogue because it's pretty quiet for a report. There was part of his reflecting and he was just like, what do I do now? Like what's next? And then correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say it was silent from that point to the end. I had to think of like what sweet like, I enjoy this last part, like different parts like that. But, um, so the game's in with you ending yourself. That's, that's how I see it. That's how I saw it. Yes. Did you get me? Yeah. 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 Uh, that's one way you can interpret it again. There are many ways to interpret this story. This is one I definitely want to hear. Like, I'm sure the over the overwhelming games podcast talk about this a lot. They talk about this game plenty, and I've never seen a, like a sole episode where they just talk about. It. I'm sure they have one, but I definitely want to listen to them talk about it because this is game. This is like their mascot game. Like the, the beginner's guide is like their game. They're like, let's talk about this one and let's reference back to this one. So I think it's like an interesting perspective having played it now. I'm going to tweet at them. I don't know if they have a. I assume they have a Twitter. If they do, I'm tagging them and saying that they're getting my therapy bill. So, <laughs> oh, they're ready to fucking pay up. <laughs> Sweet, you're getting the other half. <laughs> you put this shit in the wheel, damn it. My interpretation is to repent. He walks in a laser. Yeah, that that's what I'm seeing. Bro. That's what I'm seeing. Or maybe not even repent. Maybe, maybe I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not repent. Maybe I'm not seeing repent. Maybe I'm seeing, maybe I'm seeing a weaker will than Coda, you know, I'm seeing a weaker will for someone who's had power for so long, who's been, let me show you all these guys games and like finding out that he's like, oh, I was the bad guy the whole time. Doesn't have, nah, that sounds kind of shitty. I don't know if I like the way I phrase that, but like, you know what I mean? Being like, oh no, I'm the bad guy. I can't recover. You know? Maybe maybe that's how I see it. Interesting. You're getting chats there, people. Damn sweet yikers. Yo, listen, guys. Just take it back. We might off to we might off to buy JKR because you know, so we got a therapy pill like that. Yikers. Yikers. <laughs> it's gonna be number one, but it's just another one now. Yeah. I get you, dog. I don't think it has to be though. I think, and again, I, I think the the barrier between like reality and, and the narrative, right? I think there's still the perspective that this is somebody's narrative and whether it is beat for beat somebody's real life story, it still came from somebody's real life experiences, you know? It came from somewhere. That's why I like indie so damn much. Because I think even if, even if you're telling a story, right? Like Celeste, Celeste is this like, heartbreaking story about depression overcoming adversity but like i don't know for a fact that anyone on the team actually was zapping and dashing through the air catching strawberries and climbing up a mountain while going through a hotel you know but the the feeling behind the story of celeste still came from somewhere it still came from feelings and i think thinking about maybe this individual didn't actually go through the thing of my friend was making games and when i was looking at him and showing him to people they got mad at me but didn't express that until they finally did and i realized i was the problem they may not be that cut and dry that beat for beat but i think there's still there's still some feeling that that came from some place that came from that's still genuine right so it's hard to say but i i totally see your point i think swede's a bad guy just how i feel about it. no i blame swede swede sucks swede's a dick Love you, sweet. Uh, reflecting the story and how you felt during it helps elevate it because you did have a strong reaction to it, Burb. Stronger than I expect. It's true. It's true. I never think in chat, Burb, you definitely, it hit. I Based on your reaction, I think I saw the most out of it. Damn. Damn. Well, that's off the wheel of shame. That's that's done. That's, uh, that's over with. <laughs> that's said and done. <laughs> the game comes from an honest place. Uh, I don't think the story would have hit as hard as it did. Potentially. Potentially. I did. I love this game. Uh, it hit me. It made me feel. Uh, and I won't say anything uh, permanent now. I'm still clouded in anger. I said, that's fine. Do your thing, dog. I think we can. You can, you can sit on that. Sleep on that. Be like, man, I got that. I got the historical thoughts. I gotta sit and try and reflect on, dude. Do your thing. Do your thing. Go do something happy now. Everyone gotta do something happy. I think we're we're, we're probably not gonna spend the next thirty minutes doing anything. We're probably just gonna 
I'm gonna get some dinner and go to bed. We're not, we're not, <laughs> I don't have any more in me. <laughs> uh, but hold on, let me let me go find my tweet quick. Let me find my tweet quick. Hold on. <laughs> you do. Please don't have any titties, Twitter. We're fine. Uh, well, let me see something. Let me see. Uh, I gotta just open a new tab. Hold on. Overthinking games podcast. Are they on Twitter? Are they not on Twitter? I don't think they are. Dank it. Um, let's just retweet. Fuck. <laughs> Shit, man. Damn. Let's watch them try not to laugh. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for that. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I don't think I'm in a place where I could be like, let's try not to laugh. I'd just be like, why am I doing this? What have I done to myself? Why am I, why am I doing this? <laughs> Shit. Um. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, the mental whiplash would break me, man. I'd probably like go to bed and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely think um I think the ending's really powerful of that, but I also think uh the part the the reveal of of like Coda's feelings I think is probably the part that hit me the hardest because that wasn't maybe not something that crossed my mind directly. I think we were walking up like the corridor and I was just like the the friend that's not a friend or like not realizing how you're affecting people type deal, you know. I think that's the closest I got to realizing what was happening. And then Coda being like, I can't make games because you make me not want to make games. Like, imagine imagine that, right? Like, just for for closeness and proximity, if Sweet came to me and said, like, you played the demo for JKR and that made me not want to make games anymore. Like, obviously that was something... <clears throat> well, maybe not obviously. I was, we'll say I made Sweet feel a certain way about the game. And that, man, that's tough. Because then this part of me wants to be like, oh, well, it's all my fault because I just said, but like, what if I didn't? Because I think if it's like the way I talk about game, let me, here, let me use this as an example instead. We'll, we'll roll Sweet out of it. Sweet got enough of a punching bag for being the dick. But, <laughs> nigga, let's play this fucking game. Um, but like, um, tell me your story. If you guys saw the YouTube review uh, I put out over the weekend, um, I hated that game. That game was absolutely terrible. Just a terrible puzzle game and I hated it. Um, and the entire time I was working on that, I had these thoughts of like, I got the key through terminal, which is like one of those key distribution sites. You get the key, you play the game, submit your content. And in the back of my head, like I'm going to put this link in that website and the devs are going to see me talk about their game. They're going to get a video. They're going to see like, Oh, this guy did our review. And like in the back of my head the entire time, like I, I don't, I want to be authentic. I'm going to talk about the game the way I want to talk about the game. And I'm going to say how I felt about it. But I also think like this one's going to be sent to the individual and they're going to see me trash talk their game. And that's going to hurt. Right. And I, I can't lie. I can't sit here and be like, well guys, actually uh, the game was pretty great. Even though I wanted to bash my head through what's called like, but still, you know what I mean? Like I was just, it was a spot. It was a spot to be in. Damn. I feel like I should have found a point to wrap up the YouTube part, and I don't really know if I found that yet because I'm not quite ready to end stream because I think we're still talking about stuff, but, like, I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> this might just be a VOD for YouTube to, like, hey, the game's done. But <laughs> um, Little section where Coda talked about the best. Uh, talked. Hold on. The little section where Coda talked was the best. Um, sorry, I keep scrolling up because it was done for such an emotional standpoint. Yeah, from such an emotionless standpoint. Yeah, I can read. I always love seeing how others interpret the game. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Again, I, I want to see a discussion piece. I have to hit up Overthinking Games and see, like, do you have just the Beginner's Guide podcast? I might throw that in the Discord if they have it and, and be like, hey, check this one out. I think they're on Apple Podcast. I don't know if they're on everything, but... um. They're probably on Spotify. I listen to them on Spotify. That's true. Um, it's like his love for games and his friends just died, but didn't turn to hatred. Oh, okay. 
That's interesting. See, it's funny because I felt the hatred in there, right? Like I felt the, the the accusation of just like you ruined this for me in all that dialogue. Maybe not like a burning hatred, but I definitely felt the like this was fun until you ruined it. Like I felt that accusatory like nature of it. Code revealing his true feelings made the veil and narrative that Davy, the narrator, made for us crumble. Ooh, ooh, okay, supers. Damn, y'all smart when you want to be. <laughs> Unlike Code, I encourage people to talk about the game because uh, I want to know that people think and I want to share it with others. Coda just wants to make stuff for himself and it was forced out in the open. Okay. Not valid. Not valid. That's true. Of course, that's going to suck. Yep. Uh, that's what made me almost cry. JKR fucking sucks. <laughs> T1000 getting burned. Jesus Christ. Damn. Burb, Burb went to a play. So, Burb's Coda and Swede's the narrator. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Let it out, dude. Let it out. Uh, I felt completely empty, void of everything. Damn. We still talk about JKR? Fuck. Damn. What, what is that? I'm lounging back, dog. I'm 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 back here, dude. I'm chilling. <laughs> uh damn. But yeah, guys, that was uh that was the beginner's guide. Um go like my tweet, by the way, so I feel good about myself. The the one that just says fuck. <laughs> That was about Coda. Okay, got it. <laughs> I thought I thought we're still I thought we're still throwing imaginary shade at JKR, but like shit sucks. Games are like this one. Yeah, dude, and, and like we'll we'll round out the stream with this because I, I I again I feel like I'm just prolonging the, the discussion. But we could sit here and talk about the game for hours, right? But I think this this is if I could make this entire stream the definition of why I love indie games, like it is. This is it. And again, I already used Celeste as an example. And not all indie games are this magical, bam, you're going to feel something different about your perspective on life. But like a lot are. I think a lot have that capability and some try to be and miss the, like I said, with like the Game Awards, they miss that beat. But I think the going in and playing something like Horizon or God of War, yeah, they have like that message. They have like a father-son relationship. Um, depending on those around you, even when you don't think you can or should. Um, at least that's why I took away from Horizon. I don't know. But, like, I, I think there's all these directions that AAA games take, but the the veil of big budget explosion action scenes, I feel, can, like, hide that. And I think having the smaller scale of an indie game that's just like, hey, you're not distracted by all the, the nuts and bolts and flashing lights and everything, you are seeing... This person, this small team's narrative come to fruition. And I think that's why indies fucking nail it so often, you know? Go play some fucking indie games, people. Go cry yourself to sleep like I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I feel this game, how, about, how I felt about the end of Firewatch. Okay, that is that is a feeling. That's a feeling. I feel that. Those that do, they can impact. Uh, hold on, I think it was. Uh, not all games have to do that. Uh, that's equally fine. But those that do, they can impact one's life. Uh, read some of the Steam reviews of this game, and you'll see that people's lives have changed. Cause, ooh, okay, I'm gonna have to do that then. Uh, where I hated being connected. I hated that it ended and couldn't last forever. Yeah, no, that's valid. Um, that just sucks. That, like, I don't have the Campo Santo. The the faith that I'll get any more Campo Santo. I think Firewatch was a lit game, even though I have my critiques and I was super excited to see what that would evolve into in, in the Valley of Gods. And the fact that the game hasn't been canceled, I got pushed to what, 2029 or something. But like that'll be a 10, 12 year dev cycle for that one. I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of different things I hope to see from Campo Santo. Campo Santo. I'd love to see a Firewatch too, but I think though I'm not satisfied with the ending, I'm satisfied with there not being a continuation, if that makes sense. I don't necessarily want to see them go again and be like hey we're back with henry and here oh he went to go find like i don't want i don't want them to just force a new ending that being said i want to see in the valley of god's steam yeah december 2029 so that's where that's pushed to I'll be 24 by then. Jesus Christ. I'll be 30 by then. I'll be fucking... I'll be... Hold on. That's five years, man. I'll be... I'll be 30. I'll be 30. 
we went on 34. If that's if that's the timeline, I'll be 29 next month. And then five years more. That's crazy. Aging is fucking crazy. What are we what are we doing? What are we I don't like reflection. <laughs> I don't like reflecting on things. So nine baby, if it doesn't release, I'm jumping into a fucking lazy. <laughs> Firewatch needs the end of that. <laughs> okay, please don't. Uh I did as well playing this game, so I can't blame him. Because if it's the message the game said the entire time, OMG, I'll be 2014. <laughs> For because acceptance isn't a thing. Brody, shut the fuck up. I would take a dog out. I've been able to legally drink alcohol in the States by then. And, uh, and I'm old enough as it is. Damn, that's crazy. I'll be in college. Nuts. That's a good game. Go play nuts. I know you're not saying that. but All right, guys. This has been fun is not the word. But this has been a time. This has been a good time. Thank you, guys. For hanging out hopefully next month for our sub goal we're doing some oh. fuck off <laughs> hopefully next month we're playing something a little bit maybe not necessarily happier but definitely less sad <laughs> that's what we right in there uh train of thought it just happened to have different views exactly if you have nuts thanks for playing this was fun absolutely this again i, I don't know fun's the word i'd go with but it was it was a time <laughs> sorry i had to get in there uh, you're all good love you guys Mwah. everyone have a great night um thursday night we're doing duck detective fingers crossed that's nowhere near as depressing hopefully that's way more happy because if duck detective gets depressing we're giving up on indie games i gotta tell you I got to tell you, we can't keep doing it. If I'm going to go play Duck Detective and then be like, man, I'm a terrible person. I'm just, we're moving on. We're just going to play Fortnite for the rest of our lives. That's it. And then speaking of Fortnite on Saturday, me and Chris are playing Fortnite. Um, invite a nurse room. I don't think he can make it. And then Connor's a baby. So I, I don't know what's going on there. I'm sure entirely what's going on with the schedule. But yeah, uh, Fortnite on Saturday because a new season should be out. So use code season to be and all that stuff. But anyway, and he just spam ping me Thursday. All right. You heard him. You guys heard him. Uh, when we start, I'm going to be like, hey, spam ping Burb if I don't see him in chat. And then you guys fucking blow his phone up, you know. Ducky Time is more lighthearted compared to you. Yeah, we think, but we haven't played the full game. We don't know. Anyway, guys, thanks for being here. I love you. Mwah. I want to have a good night. I'm going to go sit in a corner. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> love you.